One of the best things about Bannerlord is the extensive modifications you can do to the game. In this video today, I'm going to show you how to install the Eagle Rising mod. Now, this applies, of course, to Eagle Rising, but it will also apply to any other mod that you would like to install into Bannerlord. So we're going to go through this from scratch. I'm going to show you how to manually install them. Then I'm going to show you how to use the Vortex Manager. So depending upon which installation method you're using, you can just go ahead and take a look at the timeline and you'll be able to jump to either a manual install or the Vortex Manager. So that way you can quickly just jump into uh, whatever, you know, installation method suits you. So again, we're going to be going through this from scratch, kind of a, a little bit of a, a, a watch along. If you do hit any issues, go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. And then at the very end of this video, we'll go into some known issues that happen with the Eagle Rising mod if you encounter them when you go to play it for the first time. So let's go into how to install the Eagle Rising mod or other mods for a Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlord. And as you can see, we're already on the Eagle Rising mod on the Nexus Mods website. I'm going to provide you guys with a link to that in the description. You can go ahead and go there to find this link. So as you kind of jump to this link, you can scroll down and you've got pretty much the most important portion of this, and it is the installation instructions. And on top of that, you have got the load order. Now, not every single mod will have that load order, but it is very important when you are installing mods to either find the load order in the description, or you can probably find it somewhere in, sorry, where is it up here in the uh, kind of posts section. Someone will say, hey, I'm having a problem with this portion of the mod. They'll say, make sure that it is layered this way, X, Y, and Z in the load order. So going down here again, let's take a look at the installation instructions for manual. So this is what we will be doing. We're going to download the zip. We're going to place the module in the module folder, and then we're going to unlock DLL files. Now I have already unlocked them, but I'll still show you through how to, that works. So first things first, we're going to go to files, this tab right here. And that's going to give us two options. Now, if you are using beta 1.6.0, you can go ahead and use that. But this, the stable version of beta, I'm sorry, of version 1.5.9, the main branch is what we're going to be using today. You've got two buttons, manual download, which I'll be showcasing right now. And then the mod manager download, which I'll showcase later in the video. Now, if you are looking at any other type of mod, or this is a dated video and you're looking in the future, just make sure you're looking at this portion right here. It's going to tell you which version of Bannerlord this is relevant to. Also kind of helps to take a look at when the uh, date uploaded was to make sure you're either on the most recent or the most recent version that you want to be on. And any old file will be down here as well. So you're going to go ahead and click manual download and that will download the video. Or I'm sorry, the, uh, <laughs> the actual file. It's a two gig file, so I'm going to jump ahead here. It takes about 20 minutes to download if you're using the free version of Nexus Mods. So let's jump ahead and take a look at how to manually install this. So now that you've downloaded everything, I've got it set right here in a folder. My Eagle Rising zip file is right there. I'm going to move this here and we're going to put Steam on top. So go ahead and right click on your uh, Steam library, go to properties and go to local files and then just click browse. It's just the fastest way to get to this. You can manually navigate there if you so wish. This just does it a little bit easier for you. So now that we've got these two folders open, let's go ahead and open up the Eagle Rising zip and just get a lo load at uh, these two uh, folders. So we're going to drag these folders into this module folder in the Bannerlord parent folder. So I'm going to go ahead and just drag, drop these in or drag these in, drop these in. That's going to complete across and we will pretty much be good to go. That, that would, that's really all it takes to manually install it. The only other thing here is actually unlocking the DLL file and then setting up the load order. Now, again, I've already done the actual DLL file, so I'm going to show you where it would be if you have not unlocked them. If you've already done this before with another mod, once you unlock them, they're unlocked, so you're good to go. So let's let this go ahead and complete. We're just about there. How did I time that so well? Um, here we go. Oops. Going into the Eagle Rising mod folder. It doesn't matter. Either one. We're going to go into bin. We're going to go into win64 shipping client, and then here we go, eagle rising special powers.dll. Now go ahead and right click, go to properties, and then go to security. Now, depending upon uh, whether or not you've done this, 
all you would need to go, uh, all you need to do is just press unblock down here. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, it's right there, sorry. I thought it was in the security tab. It's on general at the very bottom. This file came from another computer and might be blocked to help protect this computer. Unblock, apply, you're done, you're good. So now that we've done that, we've unblocked everything, we've placed it in the modules folder, all you need to do is go back here, press play. This is going to bring up the actual launcher itself. You're gonna press mods, and now you have to do some reorganization. This even tells you outright like, hey, organize load at top above native. Anything you see with the TW symbol is a native module. Well, there is an actual native module called native. So you wanna place this above that and then press Eagle Rising. Then you would go ahead and just simply press play. And it'll tell you, hey, you sure you wanna do this unverified code? You just press confirm and it boots the game up. Now, you're going to experience possibly long load times the very first time you do this for a lot of instances. When you are creating your first campaign, when you are creating, uh, you're going into your first battle, it's because there were so many things added in with this mod as a 2.4 gigabyte mod that it's gonna cause that lag. So if you get there, don't worry about it, just give it some time and it will push through. You can work around that by removing the mod, making a character, then enabling the mod again and you'll have that character to play. So here we are, we're good to go, we'll skip that, and your mod is now all installed and you're here at the parent page. Let's go now through how to do this through Vortex Manager, which is 10 times easier. Okay, so if you skipped ahead and you just want to see how to do this through the Vortex Manager, it's quite easy. You go ahead, you press this button, it's going to bring up your download options, and you just press slow download unless you've got premium. Once you've done that, it will actually open up Vortex. It'll download everything for you. Um, you'll see it here. It'll take its time if you went through slow, so take let it do its whole business. But you're going to jump over here to the mod section. So now you can see that Eagle Rising should be in your mod list. Try to ignore all these other ones, but you're going to press this down arrow and press enabled. You might have to click. It'll say never installed. And in that case, you would just click that button and it will install it. But just clicking this down arrow and going to enabled circumvents you having to press two buttons rather than pressing install and then enable. So this will install and enable. It's slowly extracting it, it's installing it. And if you've already watched the previous version where I did this manually, I had to delete those files so it didn't cause any overlap. So it is all set and it automatically deployed. You have to, or you used to have to press this button, deploy mods. This would bring it into the load order. Now the load order here, you've got Eagle Rising and then Eagle Rising Bannerlord. I personally don't launch through the Vortex Manager. I've found that if I launch through the Vortex Manager, I always have an issue. So instead, rather than doing it through the Vortex Manager, because you've put these things through the Vortex Manager into their folders as if you had manually done it, the game just does it, or the uh, Vortex Manager just does it for you. So I close the Vortex Manager after I've installed it, I bring back up my normal Steam page, press play, and then I do my load order stuff through here. And it seems to be that that works the best for me. So again, if you skipped ahead and didn't see this in the previous portion, I'm just gonna go through it again real quick. You wanna make sure that this part that says important load at the top above native is at the top above the native module named native. And you click this to enable it. Click that as well to enable Eagle Rising and you're good to go. You simply just press play and it'll say, hey, you know, blah, 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 blah. You just press confirm, push through that, and you're good to go once more. Now, again, if you've also skipped through in the previous portion, uh, you will have longer than normal load times. The very first time you go ahead to press create campaign and the first jump battle you jump into because there are so many assets that are added into this game. So let's jump into uh, some of the common known issues with the Eagle Rising mod. But again, just to kind of reinforce things, if you are using any other mod other than this, you will run into some of those issues with load times because it is linked to um, the amount of assets that are being poured into that actual game. So if you do, say, the Colradian Armory, which adds tons of armor, it's going to cause some load times. Don't worry, that's not a you thing, that's a mod thing. <laughs> Let's jump into some known issues. 
And again, just these are just really reinforcing some of the other ones that we just talked about throughout the installation process. But basically, uh, female clipping and various other clippings will be fixed later. Long wait times during character creation and characters not appearing. This is an issue for any mod. Adding a large number of assets should only occur once. You can either wait or use the following workaround. You can disable mod, then make a new character without the mod, exit, then enable the mod, and then make a character with mods. That will help circumvent that. Then lastly, long load times during a battle. This happens only once per Bannerlord update. There isn't much we can do. After it loads, it won't happen again. Um, oh, also you've got vanilla faction names when starting a new campaign. We have yet to modify the names and menu images of the faction choice screen. Just get in the new campaign and you will see the difference. So if you do have any issues you're running into, I'm going to provide a link to the Eagle Rising um, uh, Discord here. You can ask them for any kind of technical help you might need. But those are just kind of the quick little known issues I wanted to go into if you're dealing with the Eagle Rising. But at that, guys, it brings our video here to a close. So if you do run into any issues with the installation of any mod of Bannerlord, go ahead and let me know in the comment section below. There almost always is a way to talk to the individual who created the mod, as you can see right here. So make sure you try to reach out to them if you're having a very specific issue that maybe you can't get help with from myself, the Reddit, the forums, whatever it is, or even through these posts. These, these are pretty invaluable little chunks of information because they've got a lot of bug reports a lot of installation issues compatibility issues so on and so forth so make sure you are really looking through these posts because there's a wealth of information that you might have completely missed but as always guys thank you so much for watching here today don't forget to like comment subscribe all that fun action but go ahead and let me know if there are, again are any issues you're running into and i'll do the best i can to help out but as always have a good one and take care